Good morning. I'd like to welcome everyone to Strauss Church of Christ. Good to see everyone here this morning. First song will be number 737. 737. Thank you, Lord, for loving me, and thank you, Lord, for blessing me. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole and saving my soul. I want to thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Father, thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Let us all with one accord sing praises to Christ the Lord. Let us all unite in song to praise Him all day long. I want to thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Father, thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Please reveal your will for me so I can serve you for eternity. Use my life in every way. Take hold of it today. I want to thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Good morning. We hope you will be blessed and encouraged as you worship with us today. We have a few announcements before we begin our service. We are glad to begin our in-person worship today. Each Sunday service will begin at 10.30 a.m. and will also continue live streaming, but at 10.30 instead of a 9. There will be no Sunday school until further notice. Everyone will be required to wear a mask for the safety of others. Masks will be available if you do not have one to bring for the services. A few new safety guidelines are in place to ensure proper distancing and for the serving of the communion. We ask that you consider, be considerate of others. Join us by live stream if you are feeling sick. We want to, sh to shower Nathan Payne and Kayla Wright on their upcoming marriage. A money tree basket will be on a table to, in the foyer for you to leave cards or you may mail your gift card to the church to the attention of Joanne Shepherd. They are using the funds that they receive as a down payment for their new home. A wedding shower is also planned for Robbie Santiago and Allison Stabnow for Sunday, June 28th at 2 p.m. Because of Allison's work restrictions in relation to COVID-19, the shower may be of virtual nature. Closer to the date, we will give more information on the location. They are registered at Amazon, Target, and bed, bath, and beyond. Paulette Poole requests prayers for Paula Poole for an ultrasound that she'll be having next Tuesday and that it comes out with good results. Also, Carolyn Wagner was at Tenova Hospital yesterday with a pos possible blood clot and is requesting prayers. I have a thank you card. Church family, we wish to thank everyone for the many cards, calls, and prayers during my recent surgery. Especially, I want to thank Connie Foster and Jennifer Foster and Pat Warren for the delicious meals they, that they brought to our house. Thanks also to Amy Barrett for the face mask. God bless everyone. We really appreciate our church family. Love, Jim and Martha Olinger. If there are no other announcements, okay. put this back on. Our reading this morning will be from 1 John chapter 1, verses 4 through 7. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. 1 John 1, verses 4 through 7. And these things we write to you that you may, that your joy may be full. This is the message which we have heard from him and declared to you that God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, 
we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us all from sin. Psalm, Psalm before opening prayer will be number 223. 223. Swiftly we're turning life's daily pages. Swiftly the hearts are changing to years. How are we using God's golden moments? Shall we reap glory? Shall we reap tears? Into our hands the gospel is given. Into our hands is given the light. Peace let us carry God's precious message. Guiding the erring back to the right. Millions are groping without the gospel. Quickly they'll reach eternity's night. Shall we sit idly as they rush onward? Haste, let us hold up Christ the true light. Into our hands is given, is given. Into our hands is given the light. Haste, let us carry God's precious message. Guiding the airing back to the right. Souls that are precious, souls that are dying. While we rejoice, our sins are forgiven. Did he not also die for these lost ones? Then let us point the way unto hell. Into our hands the gospel is given. Into our hands is given the light. Haste, let us carry God's precious message. Guiding the airing back to the right. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day that you have blessed us with, and we thank you for allowing us this opportunity to come back together. We're thankful for the technologies that we have that we've been able to worship together uh, at our homes, but we're thankful that we'll be able to come back together as one, that we're able to see familiar faces, and we just pray that as we do so, that you would keep us all safe, keep us all well, that you would help those that are sick and recovering, that you would watch over and, and help them to heal. Father, we also ask you to be with those that have lost loved ones in this time, and uh, we know that it's difficult not being able to be around loved ones and, and friends that comfort each other. and We just pray that you would put your comforting hand on them to help them through this time till we can, to, can be back together again. Father, we thank you for all the freedoms that we have in this country, and we pray that we never take those for granted. And We pray for those that <clears throat> make decisions concerning... Uh, how we do things in this country, and we just pray that you'd be with them and and to give them the, the wisdom and knowledge that they need to make the, the proper decisions. Father, today and this weekend, we we cel uh, not celebrate, but we think back on the ones that lost their lives and, and protecting those freedoms, and we just 
pause for a moment and we thank them for for that ultimate sacrifice that they gave and we just uh, pray that you would uh, be with the families that lost loved ones and and comfort them father we thank you for your son we thank you for his willingness to come to this earth and die, die a cruel death on the cross and we just pray that as we go through this service as we go through our lives that we always Put him first in our lives that we think back on the cross and his suffering and sacrifice that he did on our behalf. And Father, we just thank you for everything that, that goes on here at Stroudsville. We pray that we're doing uh, everything in accordance to your will. We just pray that you continue to watch over and bless this congregation. Be with all the ministries that, that we have here going on and that we would Go out into this community and throughout the world and try to spread uh, the gospel to others before it's everlastingly too late. Father, just be with us through our service this morning and through this, this coming week. Just watch over us and protect us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. To prepare our minds, the Lord's Supper will sing number 143. 143 will sing the first and last verses. Lo, in the grave he lay, Jesus my Savior, waiting the coming day, Jesus my Lord, up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph for his foes he arose a victor from the dark domain and he lives forever with his saints to reign he arose he arose hallelujah christ arose Death cannot keep his prey, Jesus my Savior. He tore the bars away, Jesus my Lord. Up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph for his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. this Memorial Day weekend, we want to remember all of those that it gave the ultimate price for us in this country. Let's never forget them. But most important memory, the, the most important memorial ever, is the sacrifice that Jesus gave to each and every one of us. When Paul wrote the first letter to the Corinthians, the observation of the Lord's Supper was a well-established practice upon the first day of each week. The inspired Apostle Paul had delivered unto the Corinthians the same teaching on the Lord's Supper which he had received of the Lord. And that's in 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 26. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and we, when he had gave thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner as he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do so to the Lord's death till he comes. Paul 
had simply received a revelation of what Jesus Christ said and did when he instituted his own memorial. That practice is to be continued until the end of time, wherever God's people meet together on the Lord's day. As it is inscribed on the table in front, in remembrance of me. We need to do this in remembrance of Jesus. The Lord's Supper on the Lord's Day with the Lord's table, and we observe it each and every Lord's Day. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this memorial that we have to remember, all of those that have gave their lives, but most importantly, we want to thank you for the sacrifice that your Son as he died on the cross for our sins. As we gather around the table this morning and remember the great sacrifice that he gave for each one of us, may we partake of this unleavened bread to us as Christians represents that broken body that he so willingly gave, and we partake of it in a manner well-pleasing in thy sight. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the content of this cup. The fruit of the vine to us as Christians represents Christ's shed blood as he shed on the cross of Calvary for the remission of our sins. We examine ourselves and partake of this in a manner well-pleasing in thy sight. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. That concludes the Lord's Supper. Now we'll have a prayer for the offering. And uh, as you're uh, dismissed, as you leave, you can put your uh, collection in the plate as you go out. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all the many wonderful blessings that you so richly bless us with. And we thank you for everything you do for us. And we thank you for the ability that we have to work and earn a living for our families. And dear Heavenly Father, as we have an opportunity to give back to thee, May we do so as we've been prospered and give with a cheerful heart. And dear Holy Father, that the funds it's received, that the, uh, the gospel can be spread throughout this community and throughout the world, that much good may come from it. But what we do here at this congregation, just please watch over us and bless us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I'd like to mark your songbooks, our song of invitation after the lesson will be number 560. 560. For the lesson, stand and sing number 525. 525. If for the price we have striven after our labors are o'er. Rest to our souls will be given on the eternal shore. Home of the soul, beautiful home, there we shall rest never to roam. Free from all care, happy and bright, 
Jesus is there, he is the light off in the storm. Lonely are we, sighing for home, longing for thee. Beautiful home of the ransom beside the crystal sea. Yes, a sweet rest is remaining for the true children of God, where there will be no complaining, never a chastening rod. Home of the soul, beautiful home, there we shall rest, never to roam, free from all care, happy and bright. Jesus is there, he is the light, off in the storm, lonely are we, sighing for home, longing for thee. Beautiful home of the ransom beside the crystal sea. Soon the bright homeland adorning, we shall be all the glad dog. Lean on the Lord till the morning, trust till the night is gone. Home of the soul, beautiful home, there we shall rest, never to roam, free from all care, happy and bright. Jesus is there, he is the light, off in the storm, lonely are we, sighing for home, longing for thee. Beautiful home of the ransom beside the crystal sea. Be seated, please. Thank you, Brian. Good morning. Wow, it is wonderful to be able to get up here and to speak to each of you live people. And we've been doing live stream for so many weeks now, I've lost count. But I wanted to thank Thomas for being back there and doing such a good job and getting us up and going and Facebook and YouTube. We're also going to continue to keep live streaming uh, each Lord's Day for those who are not able to be here but want to watch the services remotely. I'd invite you to open your Bibles to John chapter 11. John chapter 11. That'll be our text today. But the lesson is called In His Time. We've heard a lot about time and time frames and phases and, you know, as we begin opening up the country again and trying to pump the economy back into some sort of health. And there's been a lot of disagreement, hasn't there? If, if you watch the news, you hear, hear people who are saying, we're going too fast, slow down. Other people are saying, we're going bankrupt, speed up. And, and people who are protesting and maybe in disagreement I, I thought it was interesting, even our president mentioned recently on the news that he would like churches to open again, to, to, to worship. He said, we need, we need places uh, to be praying for our country, and I appreciated that, and I'm glad that we were able to comply and, and uh, at least have a socially distanced service today. By the way, y'all look cute in your masks. <laughs> nice. I feel like I'm in this massive OR arena, you know, and, but... Um, it's great to have you here. I'm just honored and thrilled to be here. And, and I wanted to bring a, a, a lesson about time because time frames, phases, timelines are something that frankly sometimes disappoint us and we don't agree with. And, and so I wanted to talk about God's time. Y'all know what a timeline is, I'm sure, but let's quickly review what is a timeline. A timeline is basically starting on the left of a line, moving in the direction toward the right, it can monitor or record things like seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, or even years. Timelines are very common when you're recreating an event. For example, in a courtroom scene, you'll see often a timeline used as it's read from, from left to right. And so I want to use a timeline today to talk about an event in the Bible in John 11, and that is the death of Lazarus, an event that we're all familiar with. 
but something that I hope that we can learn from because uh, we are going through some difficult times ourselves, some difficult timelines. It's turned into weeks and it's going to be months and Maggie and I were on the way here talking about what is the classroom going to look like this fall for teachers. <laughs> I'm like, wow, that's interesting. So in John 11, let's start around verse 9, and I appreciate Mark's reading earlier. It talked about light and Jesus being the light. Well, in, in John chapter 11, in verse 9, Jesus says, um, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of, of the world, of this world. And he's referring to himself. Jesus is called the light of the world in the beginning of John. And in 1 John, it mentions the light. Jesus is the light. When he comes into our presence, he illuminates our lives, and we walk by his light. He says in verse 10, if anyone walks in the night, that is in the darkness, and without the presence of Jesus, he stumbles because the light is not in him. Then right after Jesus makes this announcement to his apostles, he says, after being notified that Lazarus is sick, please come. He says, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. And they're like, okay, so he's taking a nap. Jesus is like, I go to awaken him. So they're thinking in verse 12, well, he's fallen asleep. Obviously, he's going to wake back up. And then Jesus in verse 14 speaks plainly. He says, guys, Lazarus is dead. Lazarus is dead. He says in verse uh, 14 and 15, For your sake I'm glad that I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. What is Jesus saying? Jesus is saying something wonderful is going to happen because the light of the world is in your presence, and the light of your world is on his way to go see my good friend Lazarus. But i got to be honest with you. Mary and Martha have been extremely anxious and now are weeping at this point. Why? Because their beloved brother, Lazarus, has died. They sent urgently for Jesus. So let's look at the timeline, if you'll bear with me. Notice on our next timeline in days, I mentioned day one. This is when Jesus was notified. Basically, Master, the, the one whom you love is sick. But notice that there's an intentional delay of two full days after Jesus was notified. So it could be two and a half, almost three days delay until Jesus starts his journey. Then he begins his trip somewhere around day four or five. Uh, and, and then notice that when he arrives in Bethany, he's told day seven, how long has Lazarus been dead now? Four days. You see, when Jesus, the light of the world, got there, his his beloved friend Lazarus was really dead. I mean, there was no question. If he wasn't just feeling good and he was in the tomb and maybe had a miraculous recovery, no, four days, Lazarus had been wrapped tightly in bandages and was dead. As a matter of fact, if you recall the story, when Jesus went to, to see the body, they warned him, he stinketh. <laughs> Lazarus has been dead. It's rank in there, Lord. So why bring this up? Well, brothers and sisters, this is, this is a tough time for us. It's a tough timeline. It's hard for me to come and, and preach to an auditorium that was empty. And, and, and I know it's even difficult now for you to wear a mask. And some of you are like, I know Gentry was asking me, when can we go do our visits again? I'm ready. You know, I'm going to go visit some of the widows and, and some of our members. And I'm like, in time, in time, Gentry, you know, let's... Let's do it safely, and, 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 but, but we'll get to do it. Trusting God to work in his time requires faith and patience. Would you agree? You know, sometimes we're like, hurry up, God, hurry. In Isaiah 40, verse 31, the, the new King James Version says, Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So what can we learn from the story of the resurrection of Lazarus? It says here in verse 17, if you still got your Bibles open to John 11, Jesus came, he found Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. 
Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and Mary, many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. Now notice in verse, verse 21, one of the first things Martha says to Jesus. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. So I want to talk about the three W's in our timelines in these difficult times. And the first one is the what? The what? The dark storm clouds are gathering. You remember when you first heard reports of coronavirus? Things were coming that were bad and you started getting worried and you're like, oh no, I'm not feeling good about this. Sort of like when Mary and Martha noticed <coughs> Lazarus having that bad cough, you know, and, and he wasn't feeling well. He started running temperature and laid in bed. And they're like, Lazarus is sick. And the Lazarus went from being sick to really sick. And then they said, you know, we, we need to go request that Jesus come. This is not good. Storm clouds are gathering. We're fearful. Just like when we got the news of the coronavirus, we all of a sudden are worried about, well, I have enough food. What if I can't get out? What, what about this? What about my job? What? So many unanswered questions. And so Mary and Martha, they send urgently for Jesus. Come, come. But yet in verse 17, we're told that when he finally arrived, that Lazarus had been dead for four days. And see, that brings us to the next W, and that is in the midst of the storm as it begins to hit, then the real devastation, the crushing blows, the disappointment. And I have actually here as a background on the why part, Number two, the devastation of a tornado. The storm clouds gathered, the tornado hit, people come outside and they're holding up their hands and going, why? Why? Why would God let this happen? Why? And we can't answer a lot of those questions. Why did coronavirus affect us? Why are people that we know sick? Why are people in the hospitals dying? There's disappointment. It's a letdown. You'll see again in our timeline that there was a, a full two-day delay. Here's the point I want everybody to understand today, and that is this, that we want things on a certain timeline, and we grow impatient sometimes, at least I do. We want things to happen according to our time frame, but yet there may be delays that are intentional that are in God's time. Now, do you think Mary and Martha were a little bit disappointed that Jesus didn't come right away, and by the time he arrived... Lazarus was dead? I think so. As a matter of fact, uh, we're going to go to a text in a moment and, and look at verse 21 of our text. Let's read that together. This is Martha. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Now, Martha, thinking that she meant the resurrection, when all of us will rise again, she said, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. I love this line. Jesus says in verse 25, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ the Son of God who is coming into the world. Even in the midst of her disappointment, she trusts Jesus. Even though he delayed in coming and she feels that all hope is lost for her brother who has now been dead four days, she turns to him, but she's disappointed. Have you ever been disappointed in God's timeline? Things didn't come through for the way you wanted, maybe, or, or, or you're standing there in, in the de devastation and the destruction saying, why? Why, God? What we may be experiencing, church, is God's time, his timeline, not ours. You see, if we're just patient, if we can just have faith, if we can just trust him, we may realize when all is said and done that at the end of this, God can be glorified even in the times of disappointment even in the times of devastation and destruction. And this obviously is the case in Lazarus. 
because these wonderful sisters that Jesus loved were terribly disappointed, but yet in a few moments <laughs> their whole life will change when they see their dead brother rise again. Look at verse 32. Well, that's what Martha had to say. Disappointed, but yet I'm still trusting you. You're still Messiah. I know that we'll rise again on the last day. In verse 32, we have Mary's account. When the, well, let's go with the 31. When the Jews who were with her in the house consoling her saw Mary rise quickly and go out, they followed her supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Now when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Shortest verse in the Bible. Jesus and his humanity relates to these two wonderful sisters who've been so hospitable and loving to him and prepared meals for him, sat at his feet and fed on the words that he said. Now he sees their souls deeply grieved. They don't understand God's time, but he does. And you see, we've got, even in our times of disappointment, we've got to trust Jesus. But even now, Martha says, I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Brothers and sisters, in God's time, don't lean on your own understanding. Don't be frustrated if you have to wait a little bit longer to do the things that you want to do because in the midst of difficulty, even then, God can be glorified. God can be praised. And you can reach out and love your neighbors in safe ways. Remember that God's timelines, even though disappointing to us, may bring God great glory and honor. Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. And always acknowledge Him, and He'll make straight your paths. The final W, which is the end of the story and the end of the timeline, through the disappointment and the tears and the crushing pain that they're experiencing, Jesus says, Lazarus, come forth. The wow. <laughs> you see, you wait upon the Lord, Isaiah says, and he will do what? He'll renew your strength. The Bible says that he'll lift you up like on wings of eagles. Now, I don't know about you, but as a little child, did you ever imagine riding on the back of an eagle? Hold on tight. Here we go. <laughs> what an exhilarating ride. When you stay with God and He lifts you up and He gives you that strength. His promises are sure, not false. His reassurance is stronger than anything the world can offer you, church, and His blessings are greater. Just, just remember the, the three W's in God's time. That what part... In the beginning, when you're unsure and uncertain, you dread the what's coming, just as we have. And then the why, where we begin to ask questions, and maybe there's devastation around us, and, and fear, and anxiety, job losses, income loss, shortages of food supplies. Why, God, why would you let this happen? But yet, I trust you. I trust you as the Messiah, as the risen Savior. And if we hang in there with God, and we'll just let him work on his timeline. Then there's the wow. Now, brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you that the wow ultimately is when these, these dead bodies will rise again on that last day when the trumpet sounds. I have hope as I visit my dad and his body is waning away and life is leaving him and eventually he will draw his last breath. But I look forward to that wow factor. I look forward to the day where I'll see my dad again. And by faith, I believe that. And I hope that you understand in God's time, his plan is a great plan. And I need to trust him. And I need to know that even though I go through this life and in this body of flesh, I have disappointments. God is preparing things that are great for me. The Bible says that eye has not seen, ears heard, not even entered into the heart of man. The things that are prepared for those who love. The Lord. I'd like you to turn to Psalm 118. We're going to close our lesson today. Psalm 118 is just a great reminder 
of waiting on the Lord. So I'll give you just a moment to turn there to Psalm 118. We're going to begin in verses 5 through 6. I love Psalm 118. So I just want to remind you of God's strength, of God's power, of the things that he works in his timeline, and being patient, being patient in God's time. Psalm 118, verse 5, Out of my distress I called on the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me free. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Verse 8. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. Verse 14. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. Finally, verses 16 and 17. The right hand of the Lord exalts the right hand uh, of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord exalts, the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. Can you see Mary and Martha shouting these things in praise as they embrace their brother Lazarus? I kind of feel for Lazarus. I don't know if you thought about it, but he died, was resurrected, and then he had to grow old and die again. <laughs> and then he'll finally experience a resurrection that is common with all of us on that great day when the trumpet sounds. Mary and Martha went from weeping, and brokenness, to exhilaration when they embraced their brother Lazarus. But you see, they had to experience God's time. In his time. Maybe you've got a family member who's broken your heart because they've turned away from the Lord. Maybe you have a spouse or a loved one, a good friend who has not yet become a Christian. May I suggest to you, don't give up. Maybe you're struggling with events that happened way back in your childhood and you have not been coming to church or you've turned away from God and the church has disappointed you. But hang in there. Stay with God. Because in his time, he will do great things in your life. Do you believe that? I believe he will. He has great things waiting for us if we'll wait upon the Lord. Remember Mary and Martha in the midst of their disappointment. They hung in there with Messiah. They trusted Messiah and they saw the power of God when that dead body, that cold body of Lazarus, rose up and breathed again. You see, in the old fleshly life we live in, these Bodies are dying, but God will breathe into us life again through his spirit. And we're promised eternal life. And if you're not a Christian today, we want to encourage you to think about giving your life to Jesus, obeying the gospel, becoming a Christian, and having your sins washed away by his blood. There may be somebody here today as we sing our invitation song who will respond. Maybe there's somebody online listening to our broadcast today who has not yet become a Christian. Maybe you're an erring Christian who's left God, given up on God, lost hope. But remember, stick with the Messiah and in time, in his time, he'll bless you. I promise he will. I commend you for listening today. I hope that you've been touched by this lesson. We're going to sing an invitation song and invite you to come if you need to respond. Let's stand together. that are higher, things that are nobler, these have a Lord my side. I will hasten to him, hasten so glad and free. Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to thee. I am resolved to go to the Savior, leaving my sin and strife. He is the true one. He is 
is the just one. He hath the words of life. I will hasten to him, hasten so glad and free. Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to to enter the kingdom, leaving the paths of sin. Friends may oppose me, foes may beset me, still will I enter in. I will hasten to him, hasten so glad and free. Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to thee. Again, we'd like to thank each of you for being here this morning, whether it be here physically in person or join us on Facebook and uh, YouTube. We hope that you'll join us again next Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. Our final song will be Light the Fire. I stand to praise you, but I fall on my knees. My spirit is with but my flesh is so weak. Light the fire in my soul, then the flames make me whole. Lord, you know just where I've been, so light the fire in my heart again. I feel your arms around me as the power of your healing begins. Your spirit moves right through me like a mighty rushing wind. Light the fire in my soul. Fan the flames, make me whole. Lord, you know just where I've been. So light the fire in my heart again. Light the fire in my soul. Fan the flames, make me whole. Lord, you know just where I've been. So light the fire in my heart again. So light the fire in my heart again. We pray for you, please. Our Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for this day, so thankful that we can be here in person and attending online, Lord, and just to worship you no matter where we are, no, no matter what the circumstances are. Lord, we pray, <clears throat> we pray for your healing and your protection on our country and our world, and ask you please give wisdom to all those who are making decisions about the country coming back together and opening back up. Lord, we're just so thankful for this church, thankful for each and every member. Lord, I do pray a special prayer for Paula Poole and ask that you please give her favorable uh, results from her test this, this next week. Lord, and I ask you please put your healing hand on Carolyn Wagner. Lord, I ask you to be with uh, others who are sick, others who aren't able to be here today who, who want to be. Lord, and just be with those who are carrying heavy burdens. Lord, we're thankful for Tom and his lesson this morning. And Lord, just pray that we take it to heart and know that all things will be done in your time. We love you and, and we thank you, Lord. We want to also uh, thank you for 
Uh, tomorrow as we celebrate Memorial Day, thank you for all those who have uh, given the ultimate sacrifice for our freedoms, Lord, and as we're mindful of uh, some of these inconveniences that we're, we're going through as these, through this uh, pandemic, Lord. Just pray that uh, tomorrow we're able to reflect and, and recognize that uh, they, are, they are simply inconveniences and uh, help us to just enjoy our freedoms because of those who gave, gave their lives, Lord, and, and bless the families of those who've given their lives as well. Lord, we thank you and ask that you uh, be with us until we meet again. Through Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.